Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So today we're going to talk about where is the best place to park your cash. And at the end of this video, I will do a full comparison to show you where is the best place and I personally put it and what is my strategy to get the highest yield out of my cash. All right, so watch till the end. Now, let's dive straight into it. So right now, what is the hottest news out there is actually all the bank issues, right? So many people are asking basically, you know, Pete, where, where, where is it the best place to park our cash, okay? Is it even safer uh, to have our cash uh, put in the bank, right? Because why, why is that the case? Because it's really quite scary, isn't it? You look at it over here, we are seeing banks collapsing, right? So Silicon Valley Bank already collapsed. Uh, Credit Suisse already got bought over. Uh, if you want to find out more and understand why is that the case, you can watch my uh, previous video. But right now, the topic for today is this, right? How can we... Uh, put our cash to best use, get the highest yield, but at the same time, it should be very safe, okay? So when I go about this journey to find out where to park my cash, right, I have two main considerations, okay? And I think you should also think of it uh, in this case, right? Number one is this, right? I want to make sure that my, my cash is in a liquid form of investment, okay? Where I can get access to as soon as possible. Why? Because in case there is a fire sale, now, not that the banks are collapsing, uh, but the fire sale in terms of the stock market, right? That is where I truly generate my wealth. So I want to be able to deploy that as and when that happened, okay? And number two is I want to make sure that it gives me a return that is close to the government bonds because these are what we call the risk-free rate, okay? And right now, as you know, interest rate is quite high. So we are definitely expecting to see uh, above 3% in general. Okay, so what is the first option that we're looking at right now? The first option is actually none other than this one, right? It's actually the Singapore Savings Bond. Now, for those of you who have been following my videos, right, I'll put a link all down below if you want to go and watch about Singapore Savings Bond. The good news is that right now they are still giving, right, 3.15%, uh, pretty good, right, on average. And this is the one that you can apply even right now as you watch this, okay? But there is a downside. The downside is that it's not very liquid, okay? Why? Because it takes about one month to withdraw, okay? So guess what? If I see the market crash today and I have to wait for one month before I can deploy my cash, guess what? The crash is going to be over. <laughs> so uh, that's the part that's challenging about Singapore Savings Bond, okay? And another thing is that once you have withdrawn, the issue is you may not be able to get back the same rates, right? As those of you who have observed Singapore Savings Bond, the interest has been coming down uh, gradually over the last, I would say, four or five months, Right? However, the good thing about SSB is that it is super safe. It is actually kind of guaranteed by our government, okay? And uh, none other than led by our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Lee Hsien Long, okay? Now, just to show you how far the interest has come down, at one point in time, we were looking at 4.2 or 4.25, and now we are at 3.15. So it has already come down almost one whole percent, right? Will it come down further? I'm not sure. Okay, so that's number one, SSB. Number two is actually quite popular right now out there. What we call it is high use savings account. Basically, all the banks out there are giving you a lot of promotion, right? If you put your money with us, you're going to get this percentage. And I think uh, Sidley did a very, very good article. You can go and read that. Um, it says how many percent you can get from each bank. But realistically, right, they actually have a realistic rate. Now, why is there a realistic rate? Because uh, many a times there are a lot of things that you need to fulfill. Okay, so for example, over here, you can see that for UOB, right? Uh, while it tells you that you can get up to 7.8%, uh, whoa, okay? Uh, but realistically, <laughs> right, it is not exactly 7.8% throughout because it is actually tiered, all right? And there are conditions that you need to fulfill as well, right? For example, spending, right, gyro debit, salary, crediting. The good news is that this is actually very liquid. So you can get it out almost instantaneously. It is not locked in in any uh, shape and form, right? And But the downside is the rates might change at any point in time, right? And of course, right, once again, it doesn't eliminate the risk of a bank run should it happen. Although I think the chances of a bank run in Singapore is relatively low, okay? Now, other than UOB, you can see that OCBC previously back in 2021 did drop their rates, okay? You can see that it was a reduction in rates. So... While high yield saving interest rate now is good because the interest rate environment is high, uh, bear in mind that it will change as and when the bank pleases to. All right? 
Now, the next two is actually what I call the T-bills. Now, for T-bills, uh, it has been something that uh, I've been using. And right now, even for the latest T-bill, it's actually slightly higher than Singapore Savings Bond at 3.65%, right? However, do take note that the uh, returns has also been steadily coming down as well, okay? Uh, what about the, the good things and the bad things about T-bills? Number one is, of course, safety-wise, T-bills is super safe. Right. And as compared to other instruments, actually, it gives relatively good rates. Right. 3.65 is very, very close to what we have out there, uh, about 3.8. Right. And you can buy a huge amount. You can buy one million at each time. And technically, there's no limit to it. The only thing that I feel that TBO may not be very suitable in some cases is actually that it is not very liquid. So if you buy a six months T-bill, uh, usually what I'll do is I'll make sure that I can hold on for the six months uh, because it's very ill-liquid in the market. It's very hard for you to sell it out. You're going to get a very poor price. So it is best to hold to maturity. Now, with all this said, is there no other instrument that we can consider? There is. It's actually the money market funds out there. Okay, so you can see right now there are many uh, brokerages that's offering this money market fund. Right, and they actually give very attractive rates. Now, what is money market fund? Let me explain that first. Right, first and foremost, it's a very liquid asset. It's basically as though you are buying a ETF that invests in very very short term investment. Later, I'll go into details. And on top of that, the icing on the cake is that in order to buy money market fund, you need to open a brokerage account. And right now, there are very good offers, right? uh, sign up bonuses uh, given out by all the brokerages. I, I'm going to link all of them down in my description. If you use my link, you're going to get a bonus. And of course, I will stand to benefit, right? So it's a win-win for both of us. Number three is that the interest rate is pretty high, right? Pretty, pretty good. Uh, of course, is it all rosy and there's no downside? No, there is a downside. The downside is what we call the counterparty risk. What is a counterparty risk? Basically, the person who creates the money market fund is your risk, right? If this person goes belly up, goes bankrupt, then your money will be gone. Okay, so it's very important for us before you invest in anything, take a look at what's behind, who is responsible for it. In this case, it is none other than Fullerton Management, right? So this is the main money market fund that a lot of brokerages use, uh, the Fullerton SGD Cash Fund A. Now, who is Fullerton uh, fund management that does this, okay? It is actually a subsidiary of Tomasic Holdings and is also uh, having NTUC insurance, right? Uh, NTUC income insurance as a minor shareholder. Now, how big is this money market fund? In fact, it is about 2.47 billion. It is the largest Singapore dollar money market fund. So that's the good news. And because what they invest in are mainly very, very short-term bonds, right, uh, ranging from a few weeks to maybe just a few months, you can see that historically, uh, the prices has been relatively stable and seldom have a significant dip, okay? Now, let's look at what exactly do they invest in, right? So number one, let's look at this. This is actually from their statement, right? They say that they do not invest in any uh, uh, deposits, okay? There's more than a year, right? And it is not more than 10% of their net asset if they go beyond a year. So that means the good news is that for those of you who watch my Silicon Valley bank video, you will know that they had a bank run because they invest in deposits and bonds that are way too long, right? And in this case, it will not happen to the cash funds, okay? Now, who are the counterparty to this? Because they have to invest this money in other banks, right? So which are these banks that are actually providing this service to this cash fund, okay? The top five over here collectively already account for more than 50%. Uh, bank of Nova Scotia, right? Uh, Lens Bank, right? This is a German bank. Uh, Sumitomo Mitsui, right? Qatar National Bank. And um, this is the Japanese bank, right? So these are the counterparty. I think it's quite safe, right? Because it's quite spread out. Nobody is really uh, fully responsible for an oversized uh, position. And on top of that, take note that a lot of the placement to maturity, that means the deposit that they put inside, 98% of them, right, is actually less than four weeks, okay? 98%, that means really it is not that exposed to fluctuation in interest rate. So even if, let's say, um, there's an interest rate change, right, the value of the fund wouldn't move too much, okay? So having said that, we have gone through so many uh, instruments. Let's do a quick summary to understand how does each of them compare to each other in all this segment. 
Okay, number one, let's look at liquidity first, right? So you can see that in terms of liquidity, I would say the one that scored the highest is the high yield savings account and money market fund because you can access this money instantaneously. Okay, number two, let's look at returns compared to uh, one year government bonds, which is about 3.8%, right? I would say the best one is actually the money market fund. That's quite close at about 3.6, 3.7 sometimes, okay? In terms of safety, Let's look at which one is safer. Now, I would say all four of them are actually very safe. Right? In, essentially, they are all quite safe because they are either Singapore banks or uh, counterparty that is actually owned by our government. So I think they're generally quite safe, but I would say the safest definitely is Singapore Savings Bond and T-bills where your direct counterparty is the Singapore government. Okay. Now, let's look at the amount that you have to invest in. I would say in this case, the winner from uh, the amount side will be the T-bills and also the money market fund, because I think with a limit of 1 million and almost unlimited for money market fund, it should suffice most people's needs. All right. So having a total score of, uh, if you get a full marks about uh, 20 points, right, which one scored the highest? To me, it is actually the money market fund. Now, here comes the best part of the video that you've been waiting for, right? What am I doing? Okay, so I'm going to share very openly what I'm doing and I hope you like this. Hey, by the way, guys, if you all like this video, do give it a thumbs up and even subscribe to this channel, right? So that I can provide more content over here. Number one is this. Let's go into what I do. Uh, is that I actually use T-bills, right? For my slightly longer term funds. That means cash that I know I don't need it immediately, but you know, I also don't want to invest in the stock market because I know that I might need it in a year or two times. Right, uh, so I will just put it in T bills because all these will uh, mature in, in a year or two, and I use a ladder system, right? So I'm going to put the link uh, down below as well for those of you who want to understand how do I use uh, the layers uh, ladder system to layer my funds in. Okay, now number two is that I also maxed out right the high yield savings account up to hundred thousand, all right, for my emergency cash that I need immediately. In fact, this afternoon, I will need it, okay? I will, I will, I will only keep that in the high yield savings account because I might need to withdraw it, right, at any moment's time. But I don't foresee that I need too much money, right, uh, in such a short notice. So I just put it at 100,000 where it is where the high yield savings account provide the highest return. Beyond that, actually, the returns kind of drop off, okay? Thirdly, I will use the champion of them all, which is the money market fund because it is actually one of the most liquid, right, and gives the highest return and at the same time, because it is held in the mortgage, uh, the brokerage, sorry, the brokerages, right? The stock brokerages. So what I can do is that when I invest my money in the money market fund, it's also considered as cash and funds that I can invest. So should there be a stock market crash tomorrow, guess what? I will be able to, at a click of a button, use this money and invest in the stock market. Okay? So I would say the majority of my funds right now, right, is actually in the MMF, right? So right now, the good news is this. Uh, all the brokerages that I mentioned earlier on, right? they do uh, they do have very good sign-up bonus. Especially right now, we actually see that Webu have a very good bonus whereby if you fund any amount, okay, and you just hold a fund for 30 days, right, you can get up to $500 in bonus. And when I say any amount, right, I kid you not, even $1. So potentially, your return uh, could be $1 and you get back $500, okay? But what's the minimum? The minimum is you invest $1, you can get back 50, you know? That means you can at least 50 times your return. Wow, that's credible. But really, $50 is not much because to me, the main thing I'm going after here is other than the sign-up bonus, is actually they recently launched this thing called the Money Boo, right? Where it allows you to buy the Fullerton cash fund and not just in US dollar, oh, sorry, in Sing dollar, but also in US dollar. And you can see that the US U is significantly higher than the Singapore U. Right, almost at 4.7, whereas this is at 3.8. Okay, so this is my strategy right now in terms of uh, providing uh, you to my money, right, as I wait for the market to give me more opportunities right now. So, how about you? What do you do with your spare cash? Let me know in the comments below. And once again, guys, if you all like the content over here, do like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you.